SSDs are very common these days, and I always recommend them, and even though they do have higher reliability in general than hard drives, they of course don't last forever. So in this video, I'm going to explain SSD durability ratings and also show you exactly how you can tell how far into your SSD's life cycle it is. Because if you didn't know, SSDs store data a lot differently than hard drives, which means their life cycle is quite different. So SSDs store data in flash memory cells where each cell can store one bit or more depending on some factors we'll talk about later. But also important to know, and that here's the key, is that SSD flash cells can only be written to a certain number of times before they start to degrade. Because of this, SSDs use a technology called wear leveling where it strategically places data around the entire SSD and decides where it's going to write certain things and erase certain things so that it maximizes the life of the SSD by not writing to too many cells individually at once or too quickly. So it's gonna maximize how all the cells last. So the number of write cycles per cell on an SSD is gonna depend on a couple factors. First of all, whether it's 3D NAND or not, NAND flash is the type of flash that SSDs use mostly. And the other one is how many levels per cell. Today there are four different levels. So SLC is single level cell and that stores one bit per cell. Multi-level or MLC is two bits. Then there's TLC, which is triple, that's three bits. And QLC, quad, which is four bits per cell. SLC by far has the most write cycles durability. It's between 50,000 to 100,000 write cycles per cell. MLC drops down quite a bit and it's only between three to 10,000 per cell, although if it's 3D NAND, then it can be up to about 35,000. TLC drops even further, it's between 300 to 1,000 cycles, not much at all, or with 3D NAND, it can be 1,500 to 3,000. And for QLC, these basically only use 3D NAND because even with that, it's gonna have 150 to up to 1,000 write cycles per cell. Now the reason 3D NAND flash lasts a lot longer is because it's a different type of technology. I'm not gonna get into what 3D NAND flash is, just know that it's a improved technology basically of flash memory, but basically planar, which is typical flash, uses floating gate transistors to store a bit and charge basically, whereas 3D NAND uses a charge trap. And again, I'm not gonna get into what these exactly mean, but just know that it's a different technology, that's why it's a little bit more durable. Anyway, because SSDs have this write cycle limitation, SSD manufacturers have created a couple specs which tell you pretty much how long the SSD is expected to last. The two main ones you're gonna see are terabytes written, and the other one is disk writes per day, DWPD. Terabytes written is probably the easier one to understand, and it's simply an estimate of how much data in terabytes total over the course of the life of the drive, the drive can handle. And this is going to depend on the factors we already talked about, as well as how big the drive is. A bigger drive obviously has more storage to spread the data out across on when it's being written, so that means it can usually handle way more data over its lifetime. The other spec is kind of weird, called disk writes per day, and it basically tells you how many times the capacity of the drive can be written to the drive per day over the life of the warranty. And you can actually use this to reverse calculate the amount of terabytes written by simply multiplying the number of days in the warranty times the spec DWPD. So now you know how the ratings work and you can look up the amount of terabytes written for your particular drive in the spec sheet. But you might be wondering, wait a minute, how do I know how much terabytes have been written in my drive already? Well, it's easy because your SSD actually keeps track of this so you can see it using the right software. The one I would recommend is called Crystal Disk Info. It's a really well known one, it's free and open source. I'll put the link in the description. So after you download and install that, you simply click on the drive at the top you wanna to select and then look for where it says total host writes and this is the amount in gigabytes that has been written to your drive so far. It'll also tell you the total host reads, but just know that reading from the drive doesn't affect its durability, so that doesn't really matter. So let's take a look at a couple examples from my computer. So my B drive is my Samsung 850 Pro one terabyte. It's the oldest by far, nearly seven years old, goes way back to 2014 when I bought it. And you can see it has 92,000 gigabytes written or 92 terabytes written. You just divide it by a thousand to get to terabytes. And looking at the specs for this drive, it has a warranty of up to 300 terabytes written or 10 years, whichever comes first. So I'm more than halfway through the warranty time, but not even halfway through the terabytes written. And also take note that the warranty amount is probably a little bit conservative so they can be sure that the drive will actually always usually last that long at least. So it might last significantly longer than the spec warranty 
see for Tebrites written. Next is my C drive, which is my main drive right now. It's a Samsung 970 Evo Plus one terabyte. And this is actually only two years old. I got it in 2019 and this has 50 terabytes written. But the specs actually show a warranty amount of 600 terabytes written or five years. So that goes to show how improved SSD tech has become in the time since I bought the first old drive and that one, because this newer one isn't even the top of the line one, and yet it still has double the terabytes written. And that's with both of these, the older one and the newer one, using MLC 3D NAND. So it's not like one has a better type of memory in there. My third drive, the D drive, is a little bit different. It's the Sabrent Rocket Q 4 terabytes, which uses QLC 3D NAND. This one's really new. It's only about a month old, and I figured I'd get QLC because this is for editing videos videos and storing video files. So it doesn't do a lot of writing, but it does do a lot of reading. So I figured it's fine. So far, this one only has about two terabytes written and the specs show that it can handle up to 940 terabytes written. So notice how it has way more space, four terabytes, but not a ton more durability because it is QLC. Whereas Sabrent also has a TLC version of the four terabyte drive, which has a whopping 2,800 terabytes written spec. If I had known about that one, I probably would have got that for the extra hundred bucks, but it just goes to show how much of a difference just one fewer level of memory can make for its endurance. I also want to point out that Crystal Disk Info also shows you the smart status of your drive. Smart is basically a technology for monitoring the health of a drive. It's included with all drives. It stands for self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology. And basically smart tests just look for common indicators of drive health and reliability and things that may hint that the drive is going to have an imminent failure. If it says good on a drive, obviously that's good. If it says caution, you should probably replace the drive. It might be degrading right now. And if it says bad, that could mean that the drive is in the process of failing right now. It could die at any time and you should back up immediately and replace it as soon as you can. So obviously that's just good to know, but still always have a backup because there are other causes for a failure of an SSD or hard drive that might not necessarily be predictable and it just happens at once and then you're kind of screwed. Now, you might be wondering what happens to an SSD after it reaches its advertised terabyte written limit. Well, obviously it's not like it's going to die the second it hits that limit. Because remember, a lot of times the terabyte written spec is the warranty durability. So that's the amount that the manufacturer is pretty sure it will get to. And it's likely to survive much past that, maybe even multiple times of the actual terabytes written. However, it is important to know that after a certain amount of writing, even if the drive still works, it's gonna have more and more sectors that are failing and need to be reallocated, reallocated sectors, which means that it's marked as no good and you're gonna gradually start losing more and more space on the SSD as these sectors fail. So if you do happen to reach your SSD's terabyte written limit, I would suggest probably starting to use that only for non-essential stuff, maybe like installing games onto or something that's really easily replaceable and downloadable, not anything critical at all where, you know, you could risk losing it and it would be a catastrophe. So if you do hit the terabyte limit, then I would suggest replacing it and using that for the secondary non-important stuff. Because like I mentioned, even though SSDs are typically more reliable than hard drives, when they do fail, they kind of do so on very short notice, maybe without even any signs. So of course you always have to have some kind of backup because you don't wanna be stuck with a broken SSD and it's usually significantly harder to recover data off an SSD in my understanding. So by now, hopefully you have a better understanding of how much life is actually left in your SSD. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe for new videos every week. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I was talking about what exactly does formatting a drive on your computer do? So I explained that, you can just click on that right there. So thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video.